Section 9.4.7, Section 9.4G.7 allows the Commission to revoke a special use permit if the holder of the special use permit does not follow the requirements of the special use permit. So should Hillsdale College become a nuisance at some point in time to the neighborhood or to the town or to anybody else for that matter that is affected by what Hillsdale is doing, someone can make an application to, or a complaint to the zoning enforcement officer and to the commission and ask you to revoke or modify the special use permit. So there is some protection. So what we're asking for tonight is not carte blanche to do whatever Hillsdale wishes to do. There is still oversight by the town and by the commission. Uh, but again, we are asking that the restriction on the number of people that can be outside recreating, we have no idea where the 20 people came from during the discussion and the approval back in 2020. I don't know where that came from, and I was at every meeting, but somehow 20 people on 100 acres came out. And just so that you're aware, between Mr. Duke and his family, that is soon to be 11 people. With <laughs> already, already so we already have a problem. <laughs> now, we're also asking that, so there, there's a restriction, as we went over last time, on the events, the number of events the number of people at the events, and the, well, I guess that's it, and, and the length of the events. That was the third thing. So some events, Hillsdale's allowed to have a certain number of events by the special use permit. Some are two-day events, some are three-day events, and some are four-day events. Some events allow up to 75 people, some allow up to 30, some allow up to 45. Now, in fairness, this is what was all agreed upon in 2020. And I'm going to let Laban, I'm going to stand down for a second and let Laban speak to why the events, why we're asking that the events be modified, because he is running the program on a day to, programs on a day-to-day -day basis, and he's much more familiar with this than I am. Sure, thanks, George. I'm um, glad the audio is running, so I don't have to repeat myself. Um, yeah, so one of the things that we're having to do this year is kind of experiment with the types of events that we host and i hope that that pamphlet gives you an idea of the breadth of what we're trying to accomplish there what we're discovering is that some things work and some things don't so we've had to cancel some events that didn't have enough interest in order to make the event well that's good that's that's a part of the learning process but it does require us then to be nimble and make adjustments or pivot and and look at what the kinds of interests are and come up with a, a different plan perhaps. So uh, where we get to 75 is that's roughly the working sort of indoor maximum in our largest room inside Monticello. And because we have a 32 car parking lot, that's roughly the number of people that we could host before the parking lot starts to, starts to overfill. Um, and we've had a chance over the last dozen or so events to test out this theory pretty well. We're confident that we can host an event of, of you know, 75, and honestly, anybody from the property line would be none the wiser. You can't see the vehicles from the road, everybody's inside, and the kinds of events that we host are generally ones of decorum, you can say. There are no wild keggers on the front lawn of Monticello. <laughs> we have no plans, no plans to host that. Um, you, can, you can write that one down, Jennifer. No, no plans for a kegger. No plans for a kegger. Um, but um, this could mean that, for example, we want to change the number of events slightly from what we had in the plan. So right now, for example, we're allowed you know, several four-day events. Well, it may make more sense for me to break that up into a couple of two-day events. But instead, under the current use restrictions, the way the rules read, I'd actually have to change the type of event to simply meet the, the length requirement in order to find my ability to host that extra event, when in truth, if you'll look in the brochure, we're doing one four-day event, we're doing more two-day events in the balance. And then we've got a number of single, one-off, single evening events. So really what we're looking for is the flexibility to host the events below that 75 person limit such that we wouldn't affect the neighborhood, but still have the flexibility to test and try out some things. Thanks, Levin. So the final uh, item that we're trying to change is there's no prohibition against this, but we're, we like to get specific permission to host community events and uh, a blood drive, for instance, 
or the library has approached uh, Laban to allow, I, apparently in September, they're having a historic homes tour or some. Yeah, fundraiser. For, for and it's library. a fundraiser. And they would like to be able to use Monticello for that. Now, there's nothing really that says we can't do that, but we'd like the permission to be able to do that and not have any issues with the town because Laban has been very good. Uh, Hillsdale College has been very good about keeping uh, Ms. Roy apprised of the events that are happening there uh, so that we're staying within the bounds of what's allowed. And we want to continue to do that, and we will continue to do that. But, uh, you know, so there is good dialogue. And the, the last thing I'll say right now is that there have been no complaints in the three years that Hillsdale has been operating. Now, granted, for the first year, I'm not sure there were really any events until several months um, because of COVID, but lately there have been a number of events and there have been zero complaints by anyone, not just neighbors, but anyone, regarding the events being held. The events are held, for the most part, indoors. If anybody does go outdoors, I would say it's on the back patio, and you can't see that from the road. It's set way back from the road, and there's not amplified music and alcohol, you know, a wild party, a kegger, uh, going on back there. And so uh, we would ask that this commission look favorably upon all of the revisions that we are asking for. And after the public speaks, I'd like a chance to get back up and then go through sort of your checklist, what's required by your regulations to allow this modification to occur. And I want to show you how we meet that. So for now I will, unless the commission has questions of me at this point, I will sit. That's good. No? Okay, thank you. If you guys could just sign your names in whenever you get a chance. Oh, I've got theirs. You got theirs. That's okay. That's probably good. <laughs> Anyone else like to speak? Mr. Keeney? My name's Tim Keeney. At, I live at 57 Maple Street, Summersville. And I speak both as the first selectman and also as an ex officio member of this committee. Even though I don't get to vote, I get to speak. So thanks for having me. Absolutely. Great to be here. Uh, the, again, the Blake Center for Faith and Freedom has proposed several modifications to their special use permit. Um, I've been a strong proponent of this uh, organization since Presley Blake asked me in uh, October of 1998 to help him. How do I turn over 100 acres of property to Hillsdale College? So I've, I've seen this since its inception. and. Uh, we, at first, we thought that there wouldn't be any particular problem with the zoning commission, but then later on, we, our, our assumptions weren't accurate, and things didn't happen as we thought they would. Uh, but from my perspective, I mean, the whole issue is, you know, what's in the best interest of the town of Summers? Uh, first and foremost, the fact that we have 100 acres of open space that's well-maintained uh, and hires local support to do that is uh, very significant. Uh, and again, the open space is, in, in, in one of the questions is, you know, what does this project bring to the town? Well, it brings to the town, first of all, big economic savings. And what would have happened had this property been developed for residential purposes, for instance? Uh, we know that, uh, for instance, in the uh, town of Simsbury, Simsbury went out and actually had to purchase 200 acres in their town to prevent it from being developed. Uh, South uh, Southington purchased a private golf course uh, to prevent it from being developed. And in this case, their concern was every additional child that these new houses bring into town is a cost of fifteen to twenty thousand dollars per student. So when people say, you know, what the heck is Hillsdale done for the town of Summers. I mean, that's, that's just backdrop, just something to keep in mind. I think it's important uh, because some of the some of the economic benefits of this property being handled the way it is are not direct. You can't say exactly what amount of dollars it brings into town. Um, let's see. And again, uh, the center, of course, brings visitors to Summers. 
we, you know, we, as the first selectman, we'd like to roll out the welcome map to those visitors to our community, introduce our community to these people. Um, the Blake Center, from the beginning, their attitude was they want to be good neighbors. So, and that's important to remember because it's, you know, whatever you think, you know, that's what they're trying to do is to be good neighbors, whatever that takes. Um, obviously, there are opportunities for our schools. Uh, with regards to you've heard about the possible cross-country uh, training, they've got three to four trails that can be used for cross-country training, and they're phenomenal trails. I don't know whether the school is interested or not, but that's a possibility, and that's something to consider when you think about some of these restrictions. Uh, nonprofits, uh, organizations like Rotary, the, the fishing derby that was held last year, uh, the Blake Center came to the came to uh, the relief of Rotary when the place that Rotary had been holding the fishing derby for the last 15 or 20 years all of a sudden wasn't available. And this was the 50th anniversary of the fishing derby, so it was a big deal. And uh, the Blake Center rolled out the welcome mat and said, hey, you, know, you can use one of our eight ponds. <coughs> eight ponds, by the way. It's a pretty amazing setup. And they stocked uh, one of the ponds with trout, and of course the town, the, the pond also had pre-existing uh, bass and bullheads in it, so there's plenty of fish to catch for all these kids. But it was, it was a great event. I attended it, and they may have breached the 20-person uh, uh, restriction, but it was a fabulous event. And if if you have young children, I recommend that you bring them there for the derby they're going to have this year. It's uh, it'll be terrific. Uh, other nonprofits like Lions Club, you know, maybe could hold a fundraiser there. The Red Cross has, exhibited, has talked about an interest in holding a blood drive uh, that the community could participate in. Local churches, I know, are interested. In the past, even before this center was created, they used to hold sunrise services on the Blake property. So they know there's interest in churches uh, working together to you know, utilize the facilities. Uh, and as far as uh, support for the modifications, again, elimination of the 20-person restriction for passive recreation. And we're talking about a 100-acre facility that uh, that has got a record of, you know, they've, Presley Blake has allowed horseback riders to go through there, people to hike his property. Uh, there's never been a problem, as you, as you heard, in the recent presentation, there haven't been any complaints in the last two years since they've been holding events. Again, they want to uh, eliminate the uh, restrictions of the, the two and three and four day seminars to whatever they think is appropriate versus you know, four here, three here, and whatever. Uh, so they also, again, want express permission for nonprofits like Rotary. Summers Education Foundation, uh, the library, I know they, they, uh, they indicated an, an interest in uh, putting that on their tour to raise funds for the library. And I'm sure it would be a tremendous attraction for that purpose as well. And again, their, their, their interest in extending the time limit for the uh, one special event, uh, that again, it's a, it's a pretty easy call in my book. To August of uh, 2024, and uh, that's about all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tom, could you just put your name address? Yeah, sure, sure, sure thing. <coughs> Yes, sure thing. Yeah, sure thing. Sure thing. Uh, Tom Skypeck, 6 Winwood Circle. Appreciate the opportunity to talk with you folks tonight. I'm here with my wife, Shannon, and then our four kids. Really wanted to come out and just express our support for Hillsdale's application. Think, think it's exceedingly reasonable. And really what kind of prompted us to come out was last year we went out to the fishing derby. That was fantastic. Absolutely terrific. And if you think about kids these days, right, everybody's on their phone can't get outside. So as Tim said, 
Laban and Hillsdale really kind of came to the rescue here, opened up their property, and people had just a fantastic time. And I think if, if this commission approves the application, there's going to be a lot more opportunities for kind of enriching <coughs> events uh, across summers. And you heard George and Laban talk uh, through a few of those. So, and I think, right, past behavior is the best predictor of future behavior. And I think Hillsdale has really done a lot to gel with the community. And that fishing derby really kind of prompted us to come out. But I will say, what was very interesting too, the cross country opportunity. So 30 pounds ago, I actually was on the summer's <laughs> cross country. <laughs> if you can believe it. Just 30. <laughs> But what I would say, though, wasn't a race. Yeah. <laughs> but that's going to be a great opportunity for those kids at Summers High. It's a beautiful property, and so again, I just think lots of great opportunities. So I strongly encourage the commission to consider and approve uh, Hillsdale's application. Appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Excuse me if I could just come up next. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, everybody stole my thunder. I'm the chairman of the fishing derby. I've been the chairman. <laughs> my name is Ed Giza. I live at 17 Halley Lane in Summers. Okay. Yeah, they stole my thunder. Especially Tim. You're a fellow Rotarian. You took all my. I like to fish but, too, though. Yeah, I know. But I really wanted to emphasize uh, the dilemma we were in last year. We lost our pond. We had it for over 50 years. Fortunately, a new owner came along, bought the property, and denied us access to it. Mm -hmm. uh, I met Laden, Laden, sorry, at a event at, at the Rotary. He was picking up pizzas for his kids, and uh, I went up and introduced myself and got to talking to him. And we kind of hit it off, and uh, I heard about the ponds from Tim, and I asked him if he'd be willing to do so, and he just stepped right up and just said, "No problem. Come on down, take a look." take whatever pond you think you would like and see if you can run the event there. It was the best held event we had in 50 years. What a great 50th anniversary we had with this event. We, we attracted twice as many kids. Uh, he provided the pavilion for us to have our hamburgers and hot dogs for the kids, and it was just tremendous. So I want to thank him again for that, and I say he's a really good neighbor, and I'm really impressed with some of the upcoming events he has. Uh, I think Connecticut and the town of Summers should really step up and thank Hillsdale for coming to a, our area here and bringing some of these very famous speakers to our town. I think that's really exciting news for us. And finally, I want to say there was one other event that they hosted, and it was for the Burn Center in Eastford, Connecticut, I believe it was. Yeah. Yes. Um, and this Burn Center, the Rotary Club decided to uh, sponsor it to see if we could raise money. And it's a center for children when they get burned or injured in some way. And uh, he again stepped up and allowed us to have that event there. And we raised over $4,000 for the burn center. So again, all I can say is that he's a real good neighbor and I hope you approve his, his, uh, his uh, proposal. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. you took my chair. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> Good evening. My name is Patrick Mann. I reside at 531 Hall Hill Road, and I have done so for 32 years. The Blakes are family friends of mine. I'm also a volunteer at the hospital, I'm the chairman of the board at Johnson Memorial Hospital. We've, the Blakes have allowed us to have several events over the years at their home, and it's a big draw. It helps us to raise money. The hospital is very important to our community, and we are grateful for their support. I testified in favor of the special use permit. I guess that was three years ago. I forgot it was that long. Congratulations. Uh, as a neighbor, other than the funeral service, I guess, the memorial service for Presley Blake that was held behind Monticello in a tent, I'm never aware that they're even having an event, unless I happen to drive by in the evening and I see lights on in the building, or maybe a catering truck. Otherwise, I would never know as a neighbor that they were having an event. So I don't see it as any inconvenience at all. To me, I consider it an asset to our town. And I hope you'll be uh, vote favorably any modifications to allow them some flexibility to help serve our town. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. 
Uh, my name is Paul Sal. I'm uh, 17 Twinbrook Drive, Summers, Connecticut. I, like Tim, was on the committee, or whatever one would call that, uh, when we first went out to Hillsdale in you know, December of 2018, and then that when the ball sort of all got rolling at that point, and I attended many, not all of the zoning committee meetings that that saga that we went through there, and there were there were a lot of concerns being being put out, and there's there's concerns, and then there's the reality, and Dan, I think you're the only one. That, of the of the folks sitting here, you were the only one who, who were on that committee at that point. And in point of fact, the concerns were the concerns. Um, point of fact, they've never happened. The reality is the reality. It's been it's been quiet. Um, as as Patrick could say, he lives just down the street. He drives by it all the time. You net you mean the events again? An occasional car, occasional truck. I've been to a couple of events that they've held, two, two or three, and they're they're beyond beyond well done. I mean, they've had speakers of national note um, there on, on a number of occasions, first class, very tastefully done. Uh, probably the mean age of the audience is probably 60, 61, so we're not talking a bunch of wild kids. <laughs> so what I mean? You know, these guys, folks are there. They've gotten it out of their systems, to put it that way, okay? And, then, <laughs> and so it's not like we're, we're, we're stretching, stretching the need. And, and Dan, again, you, again you, you, my God, you sat through all of those meetings. And, and none of the worries or concerns that were brought up have, have, have happened, not within 100 yards of a worry or concern. So I, I would like for you guys to consider everything that everybody said, and then look at the reality of the situation. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Stu Rosenberg, former president of Johns Memorial Hospital for the last 10 mm -hmm. years. While I don't live in Summers, I was trying to live in Summers at one point in time. I have a house that's built in 1745 and hard to wow. fulfill that um, fine. But uh, what I wanted to say is I had the opportunity as president to meet Presley Blake several times, thanks to Patrick. And he said to me, whatever you do, don't mess up that place. That's my house. And, um, and I think we did a pretty good job of doing that. I want to thank the community for supporting us because we were in bankruptcy twice. And here we are in very good shape. And Presley made the, the contribution to Johnson to build an ambulatory surgery center in Enfield on behalf of him and Helen. Mm -hmm. And that's a community person. And also we approached Lady because we have an opportunity through Trinity Health of New England to have international speakers come out here and speak on MS. We don't have a place to do it. And Layman said, let's take a look at what we can do here. And we, we have our first philanthropic committee tomorrow at Monticello, and we're going to speak about what we can do for the community in terms of international, national speakers, and from the hospital system to talk about healthcare in a very different way. And I really support this on behalf of Trinity Health of New England and Johnson Memorial. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm uh, David Martin. I live at 50 Springfield Road, and uh, I am uh, the treasurer and past president of the Rotary Club town clerk in town presently and a past small open, uh, business owner in town. And uh, I want to just, uh, let me just finish writing this, I can't. Sure. Take your time. Um, I just want to share with you guys that the way I view this is the current special use permit that the, uh, the school has is almost like handcuffing them. It's really limiting the good they can do for the community. There's so much opportunities there and they're so open to doing that. And I kind of made some notes here because I see the benefit of uh, the Blake Center for Faith and Freedom helping the town in three, three very significant ways. One is that um, it's a new destination in Summers that attracts new people to our community and they can see Summers, see you know what kind of a, a community we are, and potentially helps people who want to move to Summers from their visiting to the town. So there's, there's destinations, and some of them are newer ones. We have Sunny's is, a, is a kind of a recent one that's brought a lot of people to town. Uh, the winery, that's a new destination that's brought people to Summers. The Summers Inn, when it gets renovated and gets going, that's going to be another destination. Uh, Monticello and Hillsdale uh, is definitely a destination. And we even have uh, nature opportunities besides the, the 100 acres with Iapo and the, uh, the other farms in town with all the hiking trails. So there's a lot that Summers has to offer 
and then there's the annual four count fair. So those are all destinations where people are brought to summers. And it's an opportunity to bring new people to get to know our town, get to know the people of the town. <clears throat> so I see that as a place to showcase summers to outsiders. It, it, it's a great opportunity. Um, the other is the support for the community. We, we talked to Rotary, the Rotary Club really has benefited from having uh, the center there with the benefit concert we did and the fishing derby. But there's, there's so much other opportunities for other folks in town that could have been discussed. The Red Cross with Blood Drives, uh, the Lions Club, the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, uh, the, the churches with the sunlight services. Um, so there's, there's just unbelievable opportunities of things that can happen there. And the third thing, which, which nobody's really talked about a lot, is the economic impact. And I know that when we have the outside people coming for events, we really don't have hotel space in summer, so they'll probably be staying in Enfield or be staying at the hotel by the airport. But there are there are opportunities here, whether there's an event and and uh, Laban asks the uh, Geisers to to cater it with deli platters, so there could be an impact for Geisers to have business from it. Uh, people that are coming to events, they're going to run out of gas in town. The gas stations in town will benefit from it. Uh, we have restaurants in town: Bond 124, Hometown Kitchen, Joanna's, others. There's opportunities for them to get more business from people that are attending events here. Uh, the gift shops in town, there's a little Shumsville gift shop that makes the gift baskets and the, the, the little humble fox here, Cassandra's, there's towns and places in town where the people that are visiting want to stop in. You know, a lot of people might want to get a souvenir and take it home. So, um, and again, Sunny's Place. If people come here, they'll see Sunny's Place, so they'll get more business for Sunny's Place. And then when you think of 100 acres and maintaining that beautiful building there, you have groundskeepers, you have electricians, you have people that put the ceiling on your paving. All those people are being impacted and getting business from the Blake Center for Faith and Freedom. So there's three, you know, really pillars of, of support that this facility gives the community. And um, just in closing, I thought about it as that, that property there with the 100 acres, those the three beautiful buildings that's composed on it. and uh, it's very unique. There, there aren't very many individuals in this world that could maintain that, the cost to maintain that place. And you know, the, the, the Blakes were very unique. And I think that we are blessed that we have an institution like Hillsdale there that can cover it and can maintain it and have that, that open space, that 100 acres of open space uh, to be there as a resource for the whole community. So that's, that's what I would say. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> My name's uh, John Burney from Meadowbrook Farm. About a thousand foot of common uh, boundary with the Blake now the college property. And uh, I can vouch for what a great neighbor Press and Helen Blake were. And uh, address, address. Oh, okay. And uh, the uh, there seems to be a completely transparent uh, transition to the uh, college, and there's really been no impact um, from my viewpoint uh, on the farm on the back side of the property. Uh, when the college and the Blakes were looking for approval for for this project, they um, it was my argument at the time that this would have the least impact on the area of any of the. Uh, likely alternatives, and I think that's proven to be the case. There's been virtually uh, no, no difference in that area and in that property uh, versus before the property was transferred. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies first. <laughs> My name is Jim O'Hearn. I'm the chairman of the Economic Development Commission here in Summers. And um, I sat quietly while everybody came up and talked, and now I'm superfluous. Um, there are 151 businesses in Summers, which is much more, I think, than most people would realize. 
and it's very difficult to be a small business in a small town. Bringing people into town from outside of town is a huge benefit. It exposes businesses to new people and they either are simply aware that the businesses are there or even better become patrons of that business. So speaking on behalf of the Economic Development Commission, we wholeheartedly support their application. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, it's not a long name. <laughs> My name is Samantha Mazanowski. Um, I live at 7 Meadowbrook Road. Um, I'm here um, on behalf of myself and my husband, Dr. Christopher Mazanowski, who couldn't be here tonight. Um, so we live on Meadowbrook Road, which is directly across from the entrance of the Monticello. So we feel like we have had a very unique and up close and personal view of the goings on um, at the Blake Center since they've arrived. Um, so just from what we've experienced, um, like others have said, we never have any idea that anything is going on there. It's quiet. The only time we know something's happening is like others have said, if the lights are on or if we see the catering van. Um, they've been really good neighbors. I'm <coughs> home a lot, I'm home with my four children. We homeschool, so we're home and outside um, playing or in the yard. We live at the end of a dead end street. So I remember one of the concerns was that there would be an uptick in traffic. I've never noticed a difference in traffic, I've never noticed more people driving down our road or anything like that. Um, before they even had any events, Laban and his wife Mallory were gracious new neighbors. They came and introduced themselves to us when we probably should have been the ones going over there and welcoming them to Summers. They came um, and Laban was gracious and gave us his phone number and let us know if we ever had any questions or concerns that we could reach out to him. Um, we, we went to the fishing derby, we had a lot of fun. It was a really nice experience and it was nice to meet other neighbors in town that I don't know that I would have met otherwise. We're involved with town sports, um, but it was nice to have an event where you were with other people in summers and I don't know if I would have met some of those people any other way. Um, so we're in full favor of the restrictions being lifted. They've been wonderful neighbors. Um, we enjoy having them across the street from us. They keep the grounds beautifully. We've been able to attend some of these events and we've we just have nothing negative to say. I don't, um, to continue to restrict them, I don't know who that would really benefit because we were concerned, we were wondering what it would be like to have something like the Blake Center having events. But like others have said, nothing has, nothing has transpired. We haven't, we have nothing negative to share. We're only in full support. So thank you for mm -hmm. your time. I'm Crystal Monacu from 119 Colton Road. And I hope you will bear with me as I read it. I'm not as great on my feet as I would like to be. And it's not a lot of pages. My eyes are just 40 years old, so. <laughs> um, uh, my name is Crystal Monacu, and excluding my four years away at college, I've been a resident of summer since I was three. I love this town. I love its small town feel, its celebration of agriculture, its quiet atmosphere, and proximity to convenience without compromising and becoming a franchise mecca. As a lifelong resident, I'm not only interested in, but deeply invested in what happens in our town. After attending several town meetings over the decades and paying attention to the general news about what's allowed or not allowed in our rural home, I have found what I believe to be a common thread that we don't really like change. Um, I say this somewhat affectionately, I have, an, I have New England blood running through my veins, and I am deeply proud of where we come from. Um, the propensity for status quo and not upsetting the apple cart um, has its place, and I feel a deep sense of tenderness for what we've been able to maintain here. The acres and acres of raw land, uh, the respect that we show for the historical homes in town, and the many original farmsteads that are dotted all over our town. But I do see a downside to this. Uh, like an antibiotic, <laughs> our skepticism of change not only keeps the wonderful traits of our home protected, but also seemingly indiscriminately can keep us from some of the changes that can be beneficial for our town as a whole. Benefits that go beyond the financial and extend to the very humanity of our town. 
Small towns especially depend on a community and relationship, and I do believe that Hillsdale can play a role in helping us do that well. In my several experiences with Hillsdale and Mr. Laban Duke over the last year, I've heard and seen their desire to foster our community and those relationships. Their hospitality has been put into action for our local community in their short time here. Upon their arrival, it's my understanding that despite highly visible yard signs decrying their presence, Mr. Duke and his family delivered pies to their neighbors. It's been confirmed, okay good. <laughs> I and several other parents who live in this town benefited from the kindness of the college last spring when they allowed us to use their facility to host a mock trial for our eighth grade students, which allowed them to practice their debate skills in a formal setting, and as it's been said, they put on an exquisite show. Um, and they take care of the facility and their guests very well. And that was when none of the local courthouses would allow us to use their space. Also last spring, they hosted an elaborate protocol evening for high school students and their parents, which allowed students to practice proper etiquette for formal occasions. This past summer, I attended a classical education consortium where well-respected speakers from around the region came to speak on the values of education and how to teach our students well. All of the events I've experienced at Hillsdale property have been high class, impeccably handled, and graciously hosted. In addition, I know Mr. Duke has on multiple occasions spoken of the desire to hold more events that allow the local townspeople to visit the property as guests at specific times and enjoy the facilities, like as you've heard many about. I realize we're getting redundant here tonight. It's my understanding that should the regulations that are on them today continue, they will no longer be allowed to host some of these events or events like them. They will be allowed to continue to hold affairs of their own, but the ability to host gatherings that are meant to serve us, their neighbors, might be limited. Hillsdale College is a reputable educational institution, and I count as lucky that it seeks to be a part of our town. I believe if allowed, they will continue to be a bright spot on our map, which we can all be proud of. And I'm just gonna add this note that as a townie, I believe that it is time to thoughtfully sit down and come up with a holistic plan for what we want the future of our town to look like, rather than nitpicking each one that comes to the table. I believe we are being faced with a bigger question than Hillsdale tonight. They're offering us an opportunity to have a bigger conversation to decide who we want to be. We would do well to focus our attention on building a strong, intentional community, culture, and personality of our town, and embracing Hillsdale would be a very good step in the right direction. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak? Okay, I'm the, I guess the lone brave soul that would come up here and uh, present opposition to this. Um, my name is Eric Young, and I live at 15 Rye Hill Circle. I've been a resident of town for 26 years now. My wife grew up in town. She is, I always call her town, so I know a lot about the town from, from her. Um, but um, I think one of the reasons that I'm opposed to this amendment for uh, the special use and some of the in inclusion of some of these other um, special other other uses that are being proposed is, is more of a technical nature. So I don't want to bore you all too much. I know we, we all want to make sure we, we don't miss a, an important game tonight. <laughs> um, <laughs> but. Um, um, I'm a graduate of UConn. Uh, I have a bachelor's degree in, in geography, a master's degree in GIS. Most of my work has been of a technical nature, but I'm very familiar with zoning regulations from the mapping that I've done, from some of the work that I've, I've had in the past. I did have an internship with the town of Coventry as a planning intern when I was working on my master's degree. I worked for a small engineering firm doing site plans, so I'm familiar with doing butters lists and maps I've, I've done, I've updated the town of Bolton's um, zoning map many years ago, but then worked for just <coughs> um, completed 33 and a half years with the Metropolitan District in Hartford wa uh, mapping water and sewer mains primarily, but I understand the importance of zoning. We would, I would, well my more recent assignments was for the manager of engineering to, to overlay our um, the, 
zoning maps from some of the key towns that are growing with our water and sewer mains to, to identify industrial properties and see you know how we can plan for the future. So, you know, I've read plan of conservation, development, zoning regulations, et cetera, and I think it's important, you know, what I'd like to see is that this town is, is consistent in how it handles and enforces its its zoning regulations and, and really needs to start there and you know, I know that there are exceptions and special use permits are important, but I think it's important to also be consistent with the zoning regulations and what what is allowed in, in these zones. And the, the further this, these properties get away from the residential use, and which is what that zone is, then then the less consistent you are and you'll be in in, in um, managing these zones, and, and that's what they're there for. Um, I, I, you know, I don't see these, a lot of these other uses, they, they sound great, but they're not of a religious nature, which is my understanding what the special use permit was for, was for a religious institution. A lot of them are for uses that, that say it was a um, non-profit institution that would not be allowed to function there according to the zoning regulations for that zone. So this was a way for, you know, the Blake Center to, to move forward, but it, it um, some of these other uses are not of a really religious nature, and, and I think it's important to be consistent with what those that special use permit um, was was granting um, their use to be. Um, I ran cross country in, in high school. Uh, there are pluses and minuses to those trails. Uh, um, uh, sometimes I liked them, um, but. Um, Sometimes you have to be careful of, of roots and rocks, and and um, you can you know twist an ankle and, and um, hurt yourself pretty bad if you're not careful. And, but um, again, those are not religious uses, and that's what the my my understanding is was allowed under the, that zone and the zoning regulations. And I think you need to be consistent with that. And there was also mentioned in, in a previous meeting that I watched, and I'm very grateful for the YouTube. Recordings. It's you know it's awesome to be able to, to see this live or to watch the YouTube recordings. Um, but um, it was mention of, of recruiting events for, for for possible Hillsdale students out there. And again, I don't see that as a religious use. I see that as, as something that's promoting the college, which is a non-sectarian, you know, a liberal arts college. It's you know, according to their to their tax exempt. Um, status with the IRS, they are a school, Hillsdale College, not a church or a religious organization. Um, so promoting events for for recruiting and, and thing, other things that, that are not religious, uh, are related to the school, to me, is not of a religious nature. And I think it, it's it's um, something that we need to be, that the town should really think about these regulations and, and, and applying them consistently to everyone, no matter who they are. Thank you. I'm not sure I count because I'm Raymond really Duke's wife, but I've had an opportunity to be in the community, so I'd like to speak on behalf of Hillsdale. I don't work for them, so <laughs> my husband does. Um, I'm at 708 Hall Hill Road. My name is Mallory Duke. Um, I would just like, I'm not, I, everyone else took pretty much what I was going to say and said it. So um, in response to the gentleman before me, Mr. Young, um, I agree with him that some of the events may not look explicitly religious, but I think long-standing and historically the church has always been invested in the well-being of people. So something like a blood drive is not, especially with an organization like the Red Cross, is not outside of the church's, you know, for to, it's, not, it's not outside of something that a church would be interested in. We always are interested in religious institutions, have always been interested in the well-being of people. Um, interest in any medical or science events, that is not outside of what a church would be interested in. We want the health and well-being of people, which means getting outdoors. So some of these events, while not every single one of them is going to be religious in nature, I would say that they are not outside of what a church or a religious um, institution would be interested in supporting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Anyone else?
I'm John Papali. I live at 22 Bridal Path Drive. Um, I understand your concerns, Mr. Young. They, I just, I didn't really want to speak tonight, but I do want to address your concerns regarding the Blake Center for Faith and Freedom. And I, I want to talk about the religious issue. Um, The first nine years of my education were at a parochial school in Meriden, Connecticut. Uh, I had a rude awakening when I went to a public high school. And then Yukon for four years. And then Yukon Medical School for four years. Um, then I spent uh, one year internship at Bay State Medical Center. Five years in Boston at the Harvard Ophthalmology Program. Um, and I've been practicing in Springfield since 1985. I attended three seminars at Hillsdale um, at the Blake Center in, in the last year or so. When I went to parochial school, every morning <laughs> We started out with the Pledge of Allegiance and prayers. When I graduated from parochial school, the, the entire rest of my education, and every seminar I ever went to, any medical meeting I ever went to, there was never a prayer, there was never a Pledge of Allegiance, until I went to the three seminars at Hillsdale College. For someone to say <laughs> that this is not a religious institution is to say that the United States is not a country. It is a religious institution. I guarantee you that. Faith is imbued in everything that they do. And I am so glad that they're here, and I hope that the town continues to support them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak? George, did you want to speak again? Uh, did you want me to enter the written correspondence? Yes, into thank the record? you. Okay. So I received two, two comments, letters in favor. One was from David Andrews, MD, from Falmouth, Maine. Um, in favor, it's pretty lengthy. Um, they've attended some events, and they're in favor of this application and Diane McAndrews of West Hartford as well has attended um, events at the Blake Center and in favor and then lastly I we received an email I mean a, a letter I'm sorry from Gerald and Michelle Tarbach of two Meadowbrook Road summers um, and it's kind of lengthy but I, I I've given you all a copy, and I will um, give a brief overview. Um, modification of condition number three, they see no issue with specific groups mentioned, Summers Rotary, Cross Country, which enhance the activities. Modification of um, approval of 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13, they have some concerns. Uh, they state that given the pandemic, lack of activity, it was difficult to assess the impact on the neighborhood by fully eliminating the limits established under the original terms of the special use permit. Full elimination of governs surrounding the number of events and attendees appears aggressive with no current history or indications as to what Hillsdale College is looking to undertake at this location. Uh, Attorney Schober, Schober's request gives no specifics of these events are going to, if these events are going to substantially, along with the number of attendees. Our view is that a more clarification is needed along with governors that limit the number and size of these events so as to not neg negatively impact the residential property owners and taxpayers. Um, modica modification of approval for 9, 12, and 13 as defined in the letter, this appears reasonable. However, not clear from the letter, the number and size of events. 
and the extension of one special event for a year seems reasonable. So, there's some concerns. Thank you. I'm going to ask Laban to speak to a couple of the things in the Tarboxes letter, uh, particularly concerning the events, increased potential of events and attendees. Yeah. yeah so uh, Jerry and I are on good terms. It's unfortunate he was unable to be here. We'll, you know, obviously round up on this, but um, you know, a couple of things that he mentions in there is about not having any governs. Actually, you know, sections two and three of our proposal leave governs in place. So we're 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 not saying we want to have as many events we want to have of any size. We're saying events of 75 people or less, we can manage without impact to the neighborhood. That's where we're looking for flexibility. So there are still governance in place that would keep us at 75 people or less. And those are indoor events, Laban, correct? Exactly. Yeah, those will all be indoor. Um, it gets cold outside. <laughs> Okay, so I just wanted to address a couple of things uh, that were talked about and then go through your list uh, of what's required in order for you to modify this so that we get everything in the record. And I'm hoping that when I'm done, uh, you would be willing to close the public hearing, look favorably upon the application, and vote to approve it tonight. That's what I hope. Uh, I don't always get what I hope, but uh, we, can, we can hope. So the first thing I wanted to mention that I know we mentioned last time we were here was Laban and his family, and you met his wife Mallory, uh, they live on the property. They live at 708 Hall Hill Road. And I think that's important for everyone to understand that they're right next door to the Monticello building. And so any events that are held there impact Laban's family as much as anyone else in the area. And I also wanted to note that other than uh, Mr. Young and the letter from Mr. Tarbox, which was much different, Mr. Tarbox's letter tonight was much different, and Dan will, will remember this, I think, three years ago, Mr. and Mrs. Tarbox were adamantly, and, and I can't stress enough how adamantly opposed they were, as were, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 people that spoke against this. Tonight, there are no neighbors here speaking against this. And I think that says volumes. I mean, Jerry Tarbox has some legitimate questions that you know, we, we want to answer, but he's not really speaking against it, certainly not like he was. And no one else is here. And this was advertised in the paper twice. It was published. There was a sign put out at the entrance to Monticello directly across the street from where Meadowbrook comes out. And then each abutter, anyone who owned property within 100 feet, 10 letters went out, uh, one letter to each, but 10 different people were notified, uh, and, and they're not here. And this is a small town, and everybody knows what goes on. When, when there's a zoning commission meeting, if you're interested, you'll be here. If you're against something, you'll be here. Nobody's here. Now, I did want to speak just briefly about the recreation use. And I mentioned this at the Planning Zoning com uh, planning Commission meeting, and I'm not trying to be contentious, but I don't see how legally you can limit, notwithstanding the mass gathering permit, but how you can limit someone from having people onto their property as long as they're not creating a nuisance or a disturbance. So I think that Hillsdale has every right to invite people to come and recreate outside on the property. And we heard last time, we didn't hear this time, about the pass system that's in place. There are gates up, and you sign in, you get a lanyard. Uh, you know, obviously a different approach would have to be used, I think, for the cross-country teams. But in, in the Rotary Fishing Derby, but in general, the people that are using this, Laban and his family live there. They're, there aren't going to be a bunch of bums hanging out on the property creating problems for everybody. Not for long. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So with that being said, I want to go through, it's, it's section 9.4E of your regulations. These are the special use permit considerations. And this is what you have to find as a commission. And I'm going to say that we've proven all of this. You've heard the testimony from everybody tonight, and I think I can just go, kind of go down the list 
for you. The first is we have to comply with the regulations. Well, Hillsdale College is a religious institution, and that was proven in 2020 at the meetings. And again, you three gentlemen were not there. Dan was there. The town hired a religious land use expert attorney, Evan Seaman from Robinson and Cole. Hillsdale had its own expert and hired attorneys. And if there was a way that Hillsdale College, it could have been shown that Hill, Hillsdale College was not a religious institution, it would have been shown in 2020. Because the majority of the town, I don't know about the majority, but certainly all, almost all the neighbors were against it. In my opinion, the former first selectman was against it. And members of the zoning commission were against it. But it was shown that Hillsdale College is, is a religious institution. There's a 10,000 square foot chapel on the property. The, the, whole, the college was founded in 1844 by Free Will Baptists. I mean, it's, it's a religious institution. And so it is allowed in the A zone. And the activities that occur there are allowed under the auspices of a religious institution. So the compliance with the zoning regulations, which is 9.4 EA, we meet. The second thing we have to be is consistency with the Town of Summers Plan of Conservation and Development. Now that's about a 120 or 130 page document, it may even be longer. And I looked through that to prepare for this meeting. And what does the Town Plan of Conservation and Development say and does Hillsdale meet it? Well, we want to preserve open space, protect open space. We heard First Select McKinney talk about that. 100 acres are being protected. We're supposed to protect habitat and natural resources. There are eight ponds on the property. We're protecting those. We're supposed to protect farmland. There's an irrigation pond on the property that John Burney uses for his crops. His crops are on farmland. We're helping to protect that farmland. Protect the community character and community facilities. We've heard about the community character of the town of Summers and what a great facility Hillsdale College provides for the town of Summers. And it also talks about historic structures. Now, I think that it mainly refers to the older buildings. However, we have a replica of Monticello that no one else in the country has. There's Monticello, and there's the Blake Center for Faith and Freedom, and I don't think there are any other. We're the best replica in the world. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think you can get much more historic. Now, again, not talking ancient or old, but just a, an historic structure. Now, the, the third thing is C, orderly development. This is the third requirement. The location, the type, the character, the size, and the intensity of the use in buildings is in harmony with the appropriate and orderly development of the town and neighborhood. We heard from a neighbor that lives directly across the street about the harmony that is there. We heard from a neighbor that lives just down the road. And he mentioned, Mr. Mahone mentioned, that the he was aware of the uh, memorial for Presley Blake it wasn't because he heard it from his house, it was because he was there. I sat at his dinner table. That's the only reason he knew about it. The other neighbors that were not there did not know about it. If there were issues with what was going on, they would be here tonight. The proposed modifications, well, we don't have any modifications to the building, but we do have modifications to the use, won't hinder or discourage appropriate development or use of adjacent property. Nothing we're looking to do, nothing that the college is looking to do will hinder in any way the development of adjacent property. In fact, we heard from uh, Mr. Bernie, who shares a large boundary line with Hillsdale College. He thinks it's the best use that could have happened. He said it then, and it's proven out over these last three years. The design, layout, and operation of the buildings and uses is compatible with the properties and won't have negative impacts on enjoyment, usefulness, or value of nearby property. Again, we heard about that. Now, Mr. Tarbox has some concerns. He lives directly across the street. 
I think that the, the 75 people, I will tell you, he cannot tell what's going on inside Monticello if there are 30 people, if there are 40 people, or if there are 75 people. I think that's a non-issue because these events are being held inside. There's only 32 parking spaces. People are being brought in by van from if it's, yeah, if, it, if it's going to be like our big event that we're looking to do in August, we'll do off-site parking, valet, something to control the traffic so that way people are not you know, jam-packed. Well, now how about when you have 75? Where They're all able to park behind. Okay. Yeah. okay. All screens so from you. Where's your off-site parking? We, we uh, have looked at a couple different facilities, uh, you know, industrial parks where we could put cars on lots. We also have the lawn behind 700 that has been used in like fashion. I know a number of people have gone to events there before. Presley used to host events and he'd just line cars up on that grass. So barring our need to use that lawn, we would probably use it for that purpose and have a valet service park them there so that way, well, one fewer set of ruts in the back would be, uh, our, our groundskeeper would be grateful. <laughs> D the fourth requirement that we have to meet is the appropriate location. The proposed use is appropriate for the location, the size, the height, intensity of proposed buildings and activities will harmonize with the character of the neighborhood. We're not looking to add buildings. What's there is there. And the uses are not going to negatively impact. It also talks about the degree of care and attention taken to protect the adjacent area. You've heard tonight about how well kept up this property is. And if you drive by, you can see that. I mean, this is not a blighted property by any stretch of the imagination. This is a, this is a beautiful manicure property. The public purpose to be served by the facility. Again, we've heard tonight about the public, the, the, the good that this facility wants to do for the town of Summers. From something as small and I don't mean to denigrate it as the Rotary uh, Fishing Derby. Maybe he let, oh no, he's there. We gotta be careful. But the Rotary Fishing Derby to to the educational, to the to a blood drive, to things that benefit the community. We've heard Hillsdale College is generous. Laban opens up this property to people who have a good charitable reason to want to use it. So, and and this is I think should be encouraged by the town of Summers. We have, a, we have something that nobody around us has. Let's take advantage of that. Let's, let's let them help us. The balance between the public person, purpose and any adverse impact to the adjacent area. And again, there's, there's no adverse impact. And if an adverse impact should occur, you have the ability to correct that. I will tell you, that I have dealt with Ms. Roy on a number of issues on other properties, and she is attentive to the complaints that my clients make, or maybe complaints have been made against others of my clients. She <coughs> takes her job seriously, and <coughs> people will go to her, and they'll complain if there's an issue, and it will be addressed. In fact, I believe a cease and desist might have gone out on another property today <coughs> based on a complaint from my client. Not this client. Thank you, George. <laughs> <laughs> Public safety. <coughs> adequate provision for fire, police, and emergency equipment. We've got a nice circular driveway coming in there. We've had no issues as far as or no concerns that we're aware of from the fire, or police, or public safety. There's ponds to get water from if necessary. And we, okay. we work with the Summers Fire Department regularly. Uh, we're installing NOx boxes and extra fire extinguishers. Whatever they tell us, you know, would, would help us keep our facility safe. We don't want to see anything burned to the ground either. Is it built in sprinkler? It is not. It is not. And we, we are working with the building inspector's office regarding making sure that everything is, is what the building inspectors want mm -hmm. to see and we've hired an expert to deal with that. We don't think that that's a zoning issue, but we are working, we met with uh, Jen and the former uh, building inspectors out on site a couple of months, maybe a month or two ago, uh, and we've since hired an expert and are, are working with that. Traffic congestion, this is the uh, sixth 
item that you have to consider. Are the streets adequate to serve the proposed uses? There's been no traffic impact. Again, we've had a neighbor testify to that. And we, I mean, there are no traffic jams. There's a state road, it's a state highway. There's good sight lines coming out of there. There's, there's no issue whatsoever. Protection of important resources. Does the proposed use adequately protect important natural resources and, and community resources? And again, I've discussed this. It was in the plan of conservation and development section. Uh, again, community character doesn't detract. Uh, doesn't negatively affect existing or future public drinking supply sources. We don't, we don't see that. I mean, we're on wells there, but the, the wells are adequate. Landscaping and buffers, suitable landscaping and buffers, again, no, no issues. That was addressed, we're not changing anything, and that was addressed in the initial special use permit in 2020, and we're just looking for use changes, not facility changes. And then utilities, does the property have adequate water and sewerage systems to service the proposed use? And we're working with the sanitary to make sure that that will be uh, okay. You can approve us, uh, these just like it was approved in 2020, you can approve this for the uses, and then we still have to deal with the sanitary and the fire marshal and the building inspectors. But they're not, it's not a reason to not approve a zoning application. Just like if this were an application to build a new building for a special use. You wouldn't know whether we complied or not, but our plans would have to, and the building officials would make certain that they do. And so we're, we're telling you we're working with them, and if you approve this, that will be up to them. And they can shut us down. They can shut Hillsdale College down if there's a fire safety issue, if there's a building issue, if there's a sanitary issue. They, they have the ability under state statutes to turn the key and lock it up. And so I'm gonna close, I'm going to ask you to close the public hearing, approve us, and to state your reasons on the record, which is 9.4F, as to why you're approving our application tonight. Uh, unless you have any questions for me or for Laban or if anybody else has anything to say. Thank you. The uh, outdoor use, Laban. How do you control the uh, parking there with that? Is, it, does it, is so there ever a chance where it would overflow? A, most of the passive recreation actually comes from neighbors that uh, live in East Long Meadow in those developed neighborhoods over there. There's, an, uh, there's a walking path entry. We put boulders there to keep you know, ATVs from being able to access but people just walk over them, and the Blakes were always so gracious to invite people on. What we do actually to sort of keep track of who's on the grounds and try to, you know, again, trying to observe this 20-person limit, um, we've, we've issued lanyards with a card on it that everybody is supposed to wear. If they're not wearing that, um, you know, our, our quintessential Paul Blart mall cop will, you know, <laughs> approach them and ask them to, to leave the grounds or seek you know, seek one of their own landers so they can be a part of our special club. Uh, yeah. um, so that's, that's what we've done. I mean, the people that do come to, that sort of drive in, uh, we provide them access to, again, our parking lot that's out of sight. They'll park there, and there's a walking path that leads off the back side of that parking lot for them to enter our trailhead system. There aren't very many people that take us up on that. There are a handful of people that bring their horse trailers in and want to, you know, ride horses on the property. And so those, those are the primary people that are driving them, but we, we park them out of sight. And how many miles of trails do you have back there? Uh, we haven't measured all of the different trailheads. That's actually something that we're in the process of doing. Um, it's about three to four miles, somewhere in there. Thank you. So perfect for a cross-country team. Yeah. That's okay. Is there um, any questions? I'm just going to enter this for the record, the letter from Andrea Vitrano, the okay. sanitarian. I, I don't know that that really belongs in the no. zoning okay. file. Okay. okay. So. That's fine. Um, I'll take a motion to close the uh, public hearing. I'll second. Good. You make a motion. I'll make a motion. Oh, sorry, I'll make a motion. Second. Mm -hmm. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, next item on the agenda is this discussion and possible decision on the application of 23-002 Hillsdale College, 732 Hall Hill Road, Summers. Um, I don't know if you wanna 
attack these by uh, each item or as a whole? Um, I mean, that's up to you guys to discuss. If I think it would be appropriate to attack each one as a separate item. Well, it's that. one application. I mean, you could yeah. talk about talk it. Talk about each item. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So do you guys have any concerns with uh, the first item, which is the rotary fishing and the uh, cross country? Use? What was the turnout for that? When you, you realize property? I, I gauging it off of cars. I'm I'm guessing it was somewhere around 175 people. I see the right guys. Just about under 200. And like I said, it was public hearing. Yeah, the public hearing. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Sorry, Jennifer. I was just. That's okay. That's okay. And again, just doing what I'm told. Yeah, the audience can't talk anymore. Okay. okay. Sorry about that. I mean, the applicant probably didn't answer your question. About 175. Yeah. I know. I know. I'll leave my former friend out of this. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, any other? The number two is the expansion. Eliminate the restriction of the number of annual seminars. I think uh, we've seen that the college so far as been a good host, a good neighbor, um, and restricting them, I feel, is somewhat restrictive. It's restrictive to, to, to what they're trying to do. Um, I think we've talked, um, they've given examples of how they've had four-day seminars where they would have been more appropriate to have maybe a two- or three-day seminar. I, I feel like I think they've displayed where that, that can be uh, an issue for them going forward. Agree with them. And then uh, number three, given the orderly fashion in which seminars and events have been conducted, they want to uh, increase the number of permitted attendees to 75. What, Jennifer, what's the uh, current number? 20, 20 or 25? It varies. It depends on the couple of them. Yeah. Let's see. Based on the days. One of them was 40 for the alumni, the education. Was thirty, and what's the other one? Nine, twenty. For, uh, yeah, that's part of your application, right? Oh, this shows you the one. Yeah. Three day seminars, fifty. Four day seminars, twenty. Local alumni, forty. And the educators, thirty. But then lecture programs and admissions reception is seventy five each. Okay, so those have been held. Yeah, yeah we've got a list. I don't have it with yeah. me, but what's been held. Um, 75 doesn't seem unreasonable based on what they have for radical party. No, and they, they've had the events before and they haven't caused a problem. Yep, no complaints on that. Number four, um, allow Hillsdale the discretion to permit charitable organizations such as the American Red Cross and Rotary. Um, this is something that was brought up by Mr. Young, and I think uh, Mrs. Duke made a good point. I know, having grown up in church myself, that uh, we had soup kitchens. Bingo, I think, is a <laughs> far cry from a, what most people would consider a religious event. So I think, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, I think churches, you know, are looking after the well-being of people. I think Mrs. Duke made an excellent point on that. Um, I agree with that. I agree. If it's to better humanity, I think it's a good thing. And then the last one is to expand that uh, <clears throat> the large uh, gathering off to uh, for what do we, what do they want to? They've add? given them a time limit of one year to hold the special right. like celebration event. Three years to four years. Yeah. I don't see a problem with that either. No, that was that. Easy. Yeah, straightforward. Yeah. So do we want to take a motion to uh, either? Stay this or approve this. I'll take a motion to approve the the uh, special use permit. I'll do a motion to approve as well. Yeah. But no. okay, do you, you want to state? Basis second. You got to state and read. The well, order. I suppose you could, you know, collectively you could um, make a motion to approve the proposed modifications, you know, one through five as listed in the application. Mm -hmm. But I would state one, two, four. I've circled the ones that they're requesting change. I would maybe state the original 
conditions that will remain. So Make I'll, sense? Yes. Um, I'll entertain a motion to modify. I think I put that in here too, right? They're written in their application. Um, this, these are the ones that need to remain. Right. Okay. No. Like, right. Okay. This remains. This remains. St you know, so you can state it on the record. That way, we're we're clear that the other conditions stay. So they. So I'll take a motion to keep the original conditions. Uh, numbers one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight. 14 and 15, and, and then the resulting ones would be modified through the application handed in by Hinsdell. The uh, ones that would be modified would be 3, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. As outlined in the, As outlined in, in the application. And 4. And 4. And 4. And no, 4 is staying. Is it modified though? Oh, correct. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Yes, and four will be modified. Yep. As as written in the uh, proposal. Do I have a motion? A motion. Motion. I'll s no, I'll motion to approve. Okay, motion to approve. Second. 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 We both motioned and you both seconded. Yeah. Yeah. I'll vote to approve. You can second. <laughs> so Chris's motion to approve? Yes. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Hey, you're um, approval of the minutes from March 6th. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes from March 6th? I'll make that motion. Dan? Second? I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then can I get a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second? Second. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 The meeting is concluded. Congrats. Good job.